So, you want to make a Christian movie, but you don't know where to start. Well, that's okay, because today I'm going to give you the tools you need. That's right, I'm confident that if you just follow these simple steps, you'll be well on your way to making a film that is guaranteed to bring in the cash. I mean, the blessings. Financial blessings. Typically, when you're starting to make a film, the first thing you want to ask is, who's my audience? Fortunately, when you're making a Christian film, you can skip right on past that. You see, Christian movies, they're one of the few genres that's defined by the audience in which it's marketed to, rather than the artistic choices of the filmmakers. So we can move right on to figuring out which of the two types of audience-approved Christian movies you'd like to make. First, there's the extremely preachy kind. This type of film is ripe with topics, like somebody's got cancer, somebody lost their job, some Somebody's hanging out with the wrong crowd. Or my personal favorite, every single issue and problem crammed into one movie. I like this one because it's the most surefire way to accomplish your goal, talking down to your audience. You see, by including a bunch of story arcs, you can hit every marketable demographic. I mean, cover every issue. I mean, touch a lot of hearts. You see, the reason why us as Christians have hesitated to get into the whole movie world is because it's all about telling stories. And telling stories is a complete minefield. Anybody, any Anywhere, at any time watching your movie could misunderstand one thing and that's your fault don't ever let an issue go by without addressing it otherwise it might look like you're approving of that thing some of the people who are going to see these movies are <laughs> Well, pretty dumb. If we believe there's even a 1% chance that someone could misunderstand something, we have to take it as an absolute certainty. And I'm sure you're saying, Kevin, isn't the most fundamental concept of the Christian faith that the Holy Spirit is the one who reveals understanding of truth to each individual person? But nobody actually has that kind of faith, right? What if the Holy Spirit doesn't do his job? Better safe than sorry. If you don't want to go the whole preachy route, there is a second option, the fear mongering. Now, there are several directions you can go with this. There's always the ever elusive, dark, edgy, sci-fi Christian film. These types of movies often pop up whenever one of those creative types try to make a movie, but they still want to market to Christian audiences. While I would like to stress that creativity really has no benefit within Christianity, if you must make one of these types of films, Please make it about the rapture or spiritual warfare, anything that might scare people into wanting to become a Christian. But honestly, this type of movie has fallen out of the Lord's favor recently. Instead, I recommend feeding the ever-growing American persecution complex. Convince them that anyone who sees the world through a different ideological lens than they do is part of a worldwide conspiracy to destroy their way of life. Tell them it's their duty to fight this oppression through whatever means necessary. And I know what you're thinking, what about all these verses that specifically address this issue and say that is not how we're supposed to treat other people. Won't people in a primarily Christian audience see right past this and bring up these verses? <laughs> the great thing is, no, they won't. You'll have people defending your movie against other people who bring up those verses. Once you've figured out which type of Christian movie you want to make, aka what message you want to send, you're almost done. Uh, yeah, of course you need some dialogue and characters, but remember back in Sunday school when Bible stories were told with those flannel graphs? That's about how much depth your characters need. Flat and one-dimensional. The main thing is to cast the most famous person you possibly can. A Christian singer or a washed-up Hollywood actor. As long as they did something your audience will recognize. Just make sure that actor is in the movie long enough to give or say the plan of salvation. That way your non-Christian audiences will think that Christianity is cool and your Christian audiences will have a glimmer of hope in their heart that maybe when the actor said that line, they really meant it. Then just fill up two and a half hours with voiceover, subplots, and montages. Remember all that creativity and money you didn't use during the production of this film? Well, get ready because it's time to use it now. That's right, I'm talking about marketing. Get creative with it. Any money you can squeeze out of people, the better. Because each dollar this movie makes is more proof that God was in it. So go as far as you need. Include trinkets and doodads and magical charms. Do they mean anything? <laughs> no, of course not. But show them working inside the film. People will never question it. They won't be allowed to. You could even make the whole movie 
movie a commercial for itself. Oh, and have a book that goes along with the movie and make sure that book is prominently featured throughout the film. Just <laughs> make sure that book isn't the Bible. Then send that media packet to every church in the world. Encourage them to buy out whole theaters so you can artificially inflate the box office numbers. And best of all, guilt trip as many people as you possibly can into believing that this movie is as important, if not more important to the survival of Christianity than the Bible itself. You'll have your fans doing the marketing for you. I'm talking defending your film against any critics as if they're defending their own faith. You'll be immune to criticism because if it's one thing that Christians know they're not supposed to do, it's question the teachings of anybody who claims to be a Christian. Now, if you excuse me, I've got to go to my no accountability group. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Sagan I Kevin. I hope that you got all the information you need in order to make your Christian movie. I look forward to seeing what you put out. Send me a link and I will watch it. If you like the show and you want to support it, uh, you're already supporting it by watching it. Thanks a lot. But if you want to support it even more, you can check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash Kev. Brendan Neely and Westminster Effects both give $50 a month, which is amazing. I don't know if I've emphasized how good Westminster Effects guitar pedals are. They're custom guitar pedals, pretty amazing. Check this out. Yeah, that's what one of them sounds like. Just go to their website, check them out. If you have one of these things on your pedal board, it's a conversation piece. All your guitar playing friends, they're gonna say, hey, what what pedal is that? And then you can say, man, that's, that's Westminster effects. That's all I gotta say. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys later. Good night.